Here's the scenario. Your new boss has asked you to write a presentation for him, and you're kind of excited to see how it goes the day of. He stands up, but just before he speaks, he takes a phone call, and he says, I'm so sorry, but I got to take care of something. Give the presentation. You essentially wrote it. You're going to do great. Not what you're thinking. You are nervous. Perhaps a situation like this has happened to you before, or another situation where your negative emotions have been running high, and you've had to speak. And maybe you've gotten all choked up. Or you've begun talking about something emotional, and you've felt a lump in your throat. Or quite revealing, you begin to talk, and your voice starts to quiver. Chances are all of us here can relate to one of these scenarios because they are completely normal. Normal physiologic reactions to an emotionally threatening situation, either real or in our mind, that can come through in our voice. As a voice specialized speech language pathologist, and clinical researcher, I now know anatomically and physiologically why, and can offer some solutions so that our negative emotions don't hijack our voice. But let's back up. So the vocal cords, medically known as the vocal folds, sit right behind our Adam's apple. And there are two of them, and they sit horizontally right on top of our windpipe, that goes down into our lungs. In fact, the real reason that we have vocal folds is to protect ourselves. To protect ourselves so that we can do this. Swallow. Here, the threatening situation was that water potentially could have gone down my lungs, so my vocal folds, in an attempt to save me and protect me, tensed up and they shut. So I wouldn't choke. But here's the rub. The vocal folds protect us a lot more from swallowing down the wrong tube. They protect us when we feel vulnerable. Insecure, anxious, fearful, scared. Remember our first date? Or you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you hear that rear, 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 and the police pull you over? Or your first couple of times public speaking? The ironic thing is that the vocal folds are actually trying to help us. But the way that they're helping us by tensing and in some situations completely closing is not good for the voice. That's why the other characteristic you've heard before, which is kind of scary, is I couldn't scream for help. It's because the vocal folds are trying and trying and trying, and that's why we get choked up, and that's why we get the lump and the voice quivers. In fact, Research is now starting to prove what voice clinicians have known for decades, and that is that stress affects the voice. Maria Dietrich, Miriam Van Bersbergen, and Leah Hallou have all shown in experimentally induced stressful situations, be it public speaking or hearing a loud startle sound or having cold water put on your body, that the muscles around the voice box, and the muscles actually inside the voice box, the vocal folds, they react, they activate, and in some cases, they close altogether. 
But let's take a situation that's a common situation. Um, I think most of us have gone through it, or we will go through it, in how our vocal folds could protect us from feeling anxious for the common scenario of asking for a raise. This is how it could sound. I know the timing isn't great, but I haven't had a raise for five years, and my job has morphed into the work of three people. Did that all come in double? Let me do it again. This is an extreme example. I, I know the timing isn't right, but I, I haven't had a raise in five years, and my job has morphed into the, the work of three people. Did that sound confident? No, no. That is why how we sound is so important. None of us want other people to know that our emotional barometer is going off, because we don't want to be judged. And most importantly, we want our voice to reflect the true us. We want our voice to be congruent with our identity. We want our voice to reflect our strengths, not our weaknesses. A whole line of research called Voice and Perception has shown just that. Now, in my extreme example of a high-pitched, breathless sound, study after study, it's been correlated with the perception of anxiety. But not only anxiety, not being competent, not being strong, not being trustworthy. But what if, in actuality, you're really a strong person and very trustworthy? You have just been misperceived. In today's virtual world, the conference call and the pre-screening phone interview and even the video conference have substantially taken over from our traditional meetings and face-to-face. -face. And even in conference calls and, and uh, video conferences where we can see the person, usually at least one of the communicative partners is a little black box on a big screen, and it doesn't reflect the nuances of communication like the voice does. So the voice is substantially taking over more and more of how we are perceived in any electronic or virtual communication. Because of this, I want to end by giving you a voice exercise, of which there's many, but this is one of my favorite. So the next time you're feeling a little nervous and you have to talk, I want you to take out your finger. Everyone take out their finger. I'll do it first. And I want you to blow on your finger, nice steady airstream, while making this sound. You guys do it. Go. You can do this five, ten times before you speak because this deceptively simple exercise essentially relaxes the vocal folds. It establishes breath and airflow and voice stability, which is the cornerstone of any strong, clear voice. So just as we take time finding or picking out the best outfit for a presentation, for a meeting, or whatever, Spend some time finding your best voice. Remember, our voice can either conceal or reveal our emotions. Make sure what you say is how you want to be perceived. Because our voice can give our emotions away without us even knowing it. Thank you.